Hey, you guys. I, um, I got on a plane this morning from Chicago. I think Mommy and Daddy are watching. Hey, Mama. Hey, Dad. I tell you what, I didn't come back because I had to come back. Because you all would be all right without me. But I came back for me. Because I needed me some church today. Somebody say amen. Yeah. All right. So pray for me, okay? God of all good things. How we thank you for what you already have done in this place. Uh, this morning, from sunrise to the 9.30 which you've done all weekend, moving in our hearts, moving like a wind blowing, God, like a wind blowing love into our hearts. We just want to thank you for that and ask that as we keep listening for what you want us to do and how you want us to be, that the words of my mouth will be more than words and somehow speak from you. Amen. So my sermon is called Rising, Rising. I'm going to put my Martin Luther King fan down. <laughs> there is something I have noticed that happens first in the eyes. There's a look of recognition. Our beloved knows what's happening. They know where they are, and they know what time it is. So there's a sense of urgency, a, a darting back and forth, a, a seeking, seeking moments, seeking time, special time to say the thing, to say, to say all the things, maybe a desperate apology, or the paperwork is in the safe, or don't let them cremate me. I ain't trying to burn up. Or I love you. And you say, I love you more. And she says, no, I love you more. And you say, no, that's not possible. And she has a special name for each of you. Hey, sweetie. Hello, darling. Hey, precious. And the eyes lock on your eyes. And they shine with the not yet falling tears. And though they are receding, the almond shape you know so well is still there with the chocolatiest irises and the still whitest whites, though a little creamy with age. And they watch you and they say, I want to say something, but I'm not ready. And you say, how is it? What is it? And are you afraid? And the eyes speak and the mouth says no, but then yes and you've become used to the short sentences. But you're not used to the way the eyes seek you, look so deeply into your soul, stare at you really, really saying so much more than the sentences, saying decades of love, of love, of love in just a few minutes. Watching your beloved die is so hard, amen? The skin changes, the weight drops. Though there might be some swelling, there's also a kind of leanness in the body, a leanness in the focus, leanness and clarity. Jesus' family had friends had been watching him die for such a long time. Like all of us, he, of course, began dying on the day he was born. I mean, when he was first tapped on the butt and he sucked air and made that cry and smelled the earthy smell of the animals and the hay, he was already dying when they put him on Mary's breast, but that's not what I mean. I mean, I mean they were watching him die, watching him move toward death, 
when he accepted his purpose, when he said yes to his call, when he came dripping out of the river with visions of a dove, when he heard the voice say, you're my son, the beloved, when he read the scripture in the synagogue, the spirit of God's upon me to preach good news to the poor, liberation to the captives, sight to the blind. Today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. When he healed the leper, when he touched the untouchables, when he fed all of those people on the mountain, not asking what they believed in or who they loved, when he rebuked even his friends who did not get that children matter, that women matter, that those on the margins belong in the center, that the last will be first, that the lost will be found, when he turned his focused, lean gaze on Jerusalem, when he wept for her, when he rode in on a donkey, when he chose his words with authorities, when he broke bread with Judas and Peter, both who betrayed him. He was dying already on the way, on God's way, on the way to God's way, he was all ready dying. When he said, you'll do greater things than these, when he said the reign of God is among you and it's a place where a woman loses a coin and finds it and dances, where a shepherd loses a sheep, where, where a father loses a son and when finds him throw a party, when he said, when he said that there was a man who hired people at one time and hired them at the end of the day and paid him the same amount of money, when he said, no matter what your burden, come unto me because I will give you rest and make it light. When he said the parables and confounded them with the parables, he was already dying on the way. When he said a comforter will come. And he was rising also. And he was rising also. He was looking at them with those eyes, sentences shorter and shorter, saying, mother, your son, son, your mother, today you'll be with me in paradise. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. I'm thirsty. He was dying and rising. She was so thirsty yesterday. Not the day before. The day before, she couldn't drink, she couldn't eat. The day before, she said, Richard, I'm dying. Take me to the hospital. And they put the mask on her face so she could breathe, except she felt afraid, so she couldn't breathe anyway. And she looked with those eyes and silently said, I love you, I love you more, I love you more. And she slept, and I slept in her room, and the machine made noises, dying noises. But then she didn't die. She ate two puddings <laughs> and one jello. And her cheeks were so rosy, the nurse asked her what kind of makeup she wears. And there's not a wrinkle on that 80 year old face. And the oxygen went down to 98. And then, and then she sang the Lord's Prayer. And I said, Mama, you can still sing. She said, I know. <laughs> I know, another short sentence. And then she sang a fight song. We are fighters, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 over and over again, and preached to me about how we've been fighting all of our lives. We've been fighting for 80 years. Hell, she said, we've been fighting since we got here. We're gonna keep on fighting. Don't stop fighting. Don't give up on me. Crazy, crazy, crazy. She's dying and rising. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's dying and she's rising and she won't stop rising. Mom will not die. 
Not yet. She's resurrecting even now. And the beautiful thing is, when you're watching someone live and almost die and live and almost die, the thing that happens in you is you get really clear about life. And you get really clear about what it means to rise every moment, to seize every moment, to dance every time you can, to do all you're supposed to do, to grab life by the fist, to stand up every day, to speak truth to power now because you ain't got time to die. And so I'm thinking about Mary. I'm thinking about the eye contact with her rabbi all the time and the looking in the eyes and, and listening for the word and the thing and the, and the look and the receding eyeballs and that glassy shine that happens all along the way, all along the way, but especially on those last days, those tortured last days, those betraying days, those those tried by the judiciary days, those, those watch your friends leave you days. She didn't go nowhere. She just kept coming and kept looking and kept listening for the words, for the last words. And you know how it goes, because you know, Veronica and Jonathan done preached the sermon when they read the scripture. She listens, she looks, she hears. Mary, her name is proof of life. Her name is proof of life. Say her name. Say her name. Mary, the first woman to preach the gospel. Don't let nobody tell you women are supposed to be quiet in church. That's so absolutely crazy. He's dying. And she's rising. She's rising. Rising in authority, rising in confidence, rising in purpose, rising in call. She's rising up to tell the story. We know the story because she told the story. She's rising to purpose. She's rising to transformation. She's rising to be a change agent. She's rising to the best kind of rising, which is the rising of humanity, which is his rising. For me, Jesus is the paradigmatic best example of the rising of everything that is beautiful, everything that is human, everything that is divine, everything that is holy and can be whole. So he was dying all along the way and he was rising all along the way with every healing, with every border crossing, with every boundary breaking, with every new rule teaching, with every reformation, with every status quo squashing, he was rising. And we don't have to suspend our intellect or suspend our suspicions to understand that resurrection means the rising up of a love so divine that death cannot squash it. Something happens when you watch someone you love die, either in a hospital room or on a cross. You understand that as their life is leaving, that what is rising up is expectations for you to carry on. And so let me tell you, resurrection people, what our task is right now. Our task is to be the rising. Our task is to raise our children, to love, 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 love radically. Our task is to mentor them past prejudice, past fear, past judgment. Our task is to teach them that what they do on the playground will shape how they'll rear, they'll rear the rest of their lives. 
Our task is to put inside them beautifulness, gorgeous dance and art and music and drama and playfulness and teach them to suspend judgment so they could teach us <laughs> to suspend judgment. Our job is to love each other with such space and grace till we are magic in our radical love and welcomeness. You know, when, you're, when your mom is dying, your family behaves, <laughs> behaves, and then there can be crankitude. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? People can be stressed. They behave like those disciples. Who's first, Jesus? Which one of us do you like the most? You know. Look crazy. <coughs> Dying makes us a little crazy. But the other day, my sister and I, we're the oldest ones, had this really beautiful talk about how we're going to communicate better. Hi, Wanda. It was that we could tell we were talking over each other like, Wait, well, wait a minute, though, wait a minute, well, wait, well, wait a minute, though, wait a minute, but let me finish, let me finish. Not cranky, mean, just like not as gracious and spacious. I said, how about if we act like we're driving on the highway? Polite drivers, you know what I'm saying? And somebody wants to get in a lane. When they want to get in a lane, unless you live in Manhattan, no, I'm kidding, if they want to get in the lane, you, they put their blinker on, and what do you do? You move, you let them get in the lane. So like our little code is let them get in the lane. What about if our rising up means we're going to let each other get in the lane? We're not going to insist on our own way. We're not going to be demanding. We're not going to be rigid. We're not going to be critical. We're not going to be stank. We're going to be loving and wide and spacious and gracious like God who loves us is spacious and gracious. Like Jesus the Christ taught us to be spacious and gracious. This is what it means to rise up. Teach our children. Be our best, highest selves. And no closet prophets, to quote, quote my friend Yvette Flander, no closet prophets allowed. In other words, we have to come out. We have to, each of us, come out. And come out to be lovers of justice. Come out to be advocators for peace. Come out to stand up. Come out. Come out to take care of each other. Come out. Come out to love the planet. Come out. We don't get to just sit around and go, well, I think it'd be nice. No, hell, I mean, heck no. We've got to. <laughs> Sorry, children. We have to stand up and love out loud. Every Easter, I think, wow, how am I going to tell this story this year? It's almost 30 years of trying to tell the story a new way. Here's my bottom line. I don't need to convince you that God can get dead bodies out the grave. God can do anything. <laughs> yes. I want to convince you of your role in the healing of the world. Because God did not leave a weeping, mourning, crying people. Do not, what you crying about, Mary? <laughs> don't you know my God is able? What you crying about, Mary? Don't you know death doesn't have the last word? Not even dead, dying, putrefying systems have the last word. We are the rising up. We are the rising up. So let's do this thing. Let's do this thing like tomorrow is our last day. Because it just damn well might be. Let's do this thing like the call to love is urgent because it is. And let's do this thing like we are the living, resurrected body of Christ because we are the living body of Christ. Don't be looking around the corner for the living body of Christ. Don't be wondering about the second coming. This is the second coming. You are the body of Christ. Say it with me. I am, I am the body of Christ. I am the living body of Christ. I am the rising body of Christ. Rise up. 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 Amen.